Hello everybody and welcome back to our Medieval Total War Glorious Achievements campaign with the Germans of the Holy Roman Empire. And uh, we are on another one of those precarious moments in the campaign. It is a very, very different state from where we began the previous episode, where we had several allies, we had at least a neutral position with regard to our eastern flank, and now we are in kind of a bad way. We've got no allies at all. The English and the Danes, who have been our allies for quite some time, have jumped ship because the Hungarians attacked us, the people of Novgorod attacked us, and so now we need to find our way out of the situation. However, I think we're in a decent position to make some gains back here and even to increase our standing. Uh, for one thing, we are working on a crusade. It'll be four seasons before, four years before that's done. Uh, but we're going to have that, and we're going to be able to use that against the people of Novgorod. They are an orthodox faction. The Pope should not have any trouble uh, with us crusading against them. And, uh, you know, uh, they're not a super valid crusade target. So I think it'll be a little more expensive for us to get those crusades going. But I think we've got the funds to do it. Our economy is doing, yeah, it's okay. Uh, the Hungarians have some ships in the sea, I believe. Uh, yeah, around Sicily. And so that's interfering a little bit with our trade. Uh, the bigger problem will be if the Danes and the English actually declare war, because that is basically the end of all this lovely trade that we're getting up in the north. We've already lost a bunch of trade, of course, with all these ports in the Baltic uh, with regard to the people of Novgorod. So, you know, our economy is still strong enough, I think, so that we can absorb this. The other thing about playing the Germans is you've got just a big bloated blob of a presence on a campaign map. And that doesn't give you any spectacular strengths. In fact, it's kind of a weakness. It's really annoying to try to defend all of this. But the one strength that it does give you is that you have depth. You have, in other words, you can absorb some hits because you're just a big fat guy. And you can just take those punches. Uh, I assume that's how it works. And you can just absorb that, right? You can just deal with it. Now, we're going to have to do some of that here. We've got, uh, we've got an army right outside, right at Brandenburg. And I think it would be pretty safe for us to go and hit Saxony with this and uh, probably get them out of there. Part of me wants to hit Pomerania, uh, but, you know, that's going to open our front with, uh, with Poland. We're going to have to deal with this anyway. So I figure the other nice thing that, uh, that, will, uh, that will come from that is we'll have troops in Saxony again just so the Danes don't get any funny ideas. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We've got a uh, prince here, Prince Otto, who's 39. Uh, he is not in line for the throne. That heir is in this stack, though. This is uh, Prince Conrad, who is 23. And so we do need to take care of him. Uh, but the forces here in Saxony are pretty small. We might even get them to withdraw completely. I'm wondering, actually, if I want to do that. Y yeah, I think that'd be fine. You know, honestly, if they go back to Pomerania, that would kind of be all right with me. Let's just get these guys set up right there. And uh, I think we probably do want to take everybody here. Let's see. This guy, Prince Conrad, i got to watch out for him because he is strange. So that is hurting the morale. It is more than made up for by natural leader, which gives a plus two to morale. Uh, but, you know, strange is potentially going to get worse. And natural leader very, very rarely gets better. So this is going to be a kind of a touchy situation. Uh, but let's go ahead. We want to leave some people in Brandenburg. You know, the question is, what are the Hungarians going to do? Because, of course, they, they started this all by attacking Brandenburg uh, first. And uh, we countered. We hit Hungary. We succeeded, but the Pope gave us the warning. And so we are withdrawing. We are being good Catholics uh, in, in the hopes that... Um, a, we're not going to get excommunicated because that could be a very big problem now. We've got six influence on our emperor here, and you know there could be it could be some big repercussions uh, if we get excommunicated at this point. But you know I think things are somewhat drastic enough that we may want to move our emperor into into some something of the zone, right? We want to move him someplace where he can actually have some impact. So let's bring him over to Bohemia. Let's bring these two units of chivalric men at arms with him. And uh, they can help because I'm a little concerned we're going to get counterattacked. Possibly not here, but the, the, the difficult thing about this is when you get the excommunication warning, you cannot retaliate if you are invaded. So that's 
course, a very, very big issue. Uh, if we lose any battle, we are going to basically be giving up the province. Now, we can move some stuff around. So, for example, I don't think I need all these troops in Tuscany. We're not allied with the Pope, of course. Uh, and let's take a look. The Pope is allied with uh, two of our enemies. Actually, all of our enemies. The Pope is allied with the Hungarians, the Italians, and the people of Novgorod. So maybe he would charge a lot for that crusade, but I guess we'll have to see when we, when we get there. But let's take, like... He doesn't have that much around here. If he decides to attack us... It's not really looking that threatening. So let's leave behind like one stack. And so let's take all of these units that are good but kind of expensive. And sure, 45 uh, militia sergeants. Okay, they'll come over, uh, over here to Milan. And I've just got to remember to keep moving them out and to the right. That's going to be the idea. Yeah, not a lot of cash. Okay, so that's that's coming in over here to support Venice. I think we've got enough to hold out if we're attacked here. But let's just train another thing. And let's go with some archers in Austria. You know, stuff that I just never bothered to build. We do have an organ gun crew and hobelars. I don't know. I, 10 support cost, though. That's pretty pretty low. It might be nice to put this in, like, a castle someplace. Let's do it. Just as a kind of a fun thing. I'll bring it up, uh, and we'll put it in Saxony, just to give the Danes a surprise, because I want this castle to be uh, nice and protected. Uh, but in Bohemia, we do have archers. Uh, okay, yeah, I think I think we'll be just fine if we're attacked here, but we do have to keep, keep training. Let's go with... Uh, more archers because I feel like the Hungarians are just going to have lots of ranged stuff. They usually train horse archers and these uh, these Jobagi. These are a really really interesting little unit. Javelins, really good versus armor. Strong charge too, so they will get into melee. Uh, but they've got no shield. They've got what seems like no armor. Uh, but they can be pretty effective. And they can train them just about anywhere, like any fort, I think. That's all you need. So, uh, that will keep training there. And here, we've got, okay, we've got some mounted crossbowmen in Silesia. That's very nice. All right, and I think, I think this stack is going to be just fine where it is. Let's leave it there. And let's go with some more foot archers, because we don't have any of those. Okay, fortunately this can only be attacked from Poland, so we can have a pretty good sense of that. Um, what I'd like to do at some point, it's going to be four years before the Crusade is ready, right? So part of me thinks, okay, I want to hit Saxony with that Crusade. But obviously we've got to defend Saxony before the Crusade happens, right? So let's take everybody out of Brandenburg um, and force them out and then just fight on a sort of single front. Let's leave these guys behind, leave the 95 spearmen, and uh, let's bring along the Vikings, I suppose, and we'll go right there. Loyalty is pretty good. They should maybe retreat. If they retreat to Pomerania, we'll pursue them to Pomerania. Um, but we need to have, you know, men in the area. Archers in Friesland and Flanders, I can build absolutely nothing. Let's go with some crossbowmen at Ile de France. And Swabia, we're taking a break from uh, chivalric men at arms because of that crusade. Got different units available uh, in terms of mercs at Burgundy, but I think we're going to stick with the basics here and just go with archers, because again, the Danes are now a uh, a bit of a problem. They could just hit us, and you know some of their units are a little intimidating. Vikings have uh, have frightened me, given my past experience with them in Novgorod. But they don't have great upgrades. I mean, they've got a really good general here. So their valor is quite good. And their armor is, you know, it's okay. They got, a, what, what is that, a plus one armor upgrade? Well, I think the thing, honestly, to do in Flanders is just to keep building boats uh, to try to maintain this in case the Danes do get a problem with us. But the other issue is we've got the Golden Horde. 
right? And so I'm kind of hoping that they're going to be a massive balancing power power that has come in at just the right time. That is that is the dream here. Because just as Novgorod and Hungary decided to nibble away at my eastern, northeastern flank, in comes the Golden Horde, and they've got to be causing them some distress. Yeah, the, Novgorod is attacking Chernigov. That is the Golden Horde. I've got to I've got to imagine, right? I mean, the Byzantines own that territory, I think. Uh, but I, th I think they must have lost it. Okay, so we've lost Hungary. That's expected. Novgorod retreats. We've got Saxony back, and we won. Now, what is this? Novgorod or the Danes? All right. Beautiful. We won all of those naval battles. We really needed that. All right, and uh, Prince Heinrich got some good traits here. Yeah, where's all those big Hungarian stacks now, huh? Where are they? They're gone. Oh, but the Novgorod is doing pretty good. Okay, well, we got to keep our eye on this. Um, they could be in Volhynia, right? Uh, Hungary could be, uh, could be hanging out there. So we're going to try an alliance here uh, with the Golden Horde. We'll just see if this works out. They're coming in really strong here, but I don't think they're doing anything. They're not, like, invading outside of this, this region. They're not going down to Syria. Uh, they're not going up here. I don't think they're going into Rum. Let's check it out. Judith has, uh, she's 20, so she's got 10 or 15 more years before she uh, ages into the nunnery there. And are we at war with anybody else? No, we're not at all. So we were just uh, successfully defending against those Novgorod fleets there. That should help our income a little bit. Oh yeah, look at the difference that makes. I mean, part of it is we got Saxony back. Uh, this is making 271 though. It's not, it's not making us all that much cash. It's really that we got the trade back online and not even to the Baltic because we're not trading with them. Uh, but here, here, and all of this was being blocked. So very good that we cleared that up and just look at the Byzantine fleets here. Just ridiculous. Four ships here. This looks like this looks like five and another one. So very very interesting. Um. Yeah, let's see. Well, we can spend some cash now, I guess. Uh oh. And one thing I noticed as I was looking at the footage from the last episode, I take Venice thinking, "Oh, this is great. We're making we're making money." We are not making any money. Uh, we are only making local trade off of this trading post, and that's because there's no port. For some inexplicable reason, there's no port in Venice. You can tell because, you know, it's not there on the campaign map. Uh, we're able to trade ships here, so that explains why I overlooked that, uh, because, you know, you would naturally expect that the port would exist. You need a port in order to be able to construct shipbuilding facilities in the first place. Uh, but no, we did not have a port at all. Okay, so how do we want to distribute this? I feel like Austria is pretty vulnerable and really important, right? If they take Austria, they can hit, you know, all of these, these places. If they take Venice, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, but we've got, we've just got more stuff around there. We can take it back. So Croatia, Prince Istvan, natural leader, but lazy. Okay. And they're training arbalesters, it looks like. And not much else. I think they're uh, they're well and distracted. Let's move our princess uh, up here. So the Golden Horde, I assume, uh, was in Chernigov, right? The Byzantines are not at war with the people of Novgorod. So this is just them concentrating their forces against the Mongols and doing really well. Very, very disappointing to see that. Let's go down to Periaslavl. And, uh, yeah, we'll keep our bishop right there to ask for the alliance. Spy out Volhynia. Our princesses are doing great in terms of age. Let's go to Ryazan. We've still got a Byzantine presence up there in Volga, Bulgaria, but, I, you know, that's well cut off at this point. And, again, this is going to be mostly just sitting tight as we basically just move troops around uh, to wherever they can be most useful. Uh, so, for example, 
we've got, let's see, I think we've got a decent force here. In terms of the adjacent armies, that's just Wessex and Normandy, right? They could hit us. I mean, they are neutral currently. But if they do hit us, I'm not that worried. Okay, maybe I should be. But I've got two chivalric uh, men-at-arms. I've got a good general here. Uh, and I've got, you know, two and a half archers. So, the, the bigger threat is Ile de France, I think. Oh, and this guy's uh, rather disloyal, isn't he? So, let's, um, let's remove the title from Lord Carolinger here, because he's, uh, he's pretty bad as a, as a, uh, governor, it turns out. Odd number of toes. Uh, and we can give it to the Command Star guy, just so that he is more loyal. Okay, but yeah, let's just keep training here. Um, I'll go with, yeah, just another crossbow. And in Burgundy, let's keep all these units uh, right here, I think. We can, we can go ahead and, uh, okay, we just merged that single spear man in with one of these other units, so that's fine. Okay, not sure that I want to spend money on mercenaries. Let's see, you were going out of Tuscany, uh, and you were going here to govern Genoa, I believe. Those guys were just fine. And I think we were leaving all of this. No, I was going to bring these guys away. Yeah, I think that works. We'll just move them over to Venice. Now we got a, a three-star general down here. And where do we need archers more? We got one and a half. We got a bunch here. I think they would be more useful in Austria, so right over there. I'm gonna have to reorder this stuff because it's very messy uh, currently. But looking at this, we've got two Swabians. We've got a three-star uh, Prince Ludwig, Pride. That's you know hurting his command, but giving him great valor, so that's very good. And the Hungarians are just not concentrating their forces along the border here. So that's, uh, that's all good news. Um, that does suggest that we could maybe get away with thinning out the garrisons here. They didn't go after Brandenburg, right? Um, and we could maybe just continue our progress up here along the Baltic coast. And, you know, aim a crusade like right here. This is as far as I think I want to go. No, Livonia. I want to get Prussia and Livonia for the uh, Drangnack Austin. I think we got to get Pomerania along the way. The question is, do we do it while Danish loyalties are uncertain? I mean, the Danes are busy. They have a war with the Spanish, so it's not like they've got nothing to do. And in fact, they're not doing all that well in this war. Uh, if we go over to Castile and do we have a princess down here? Well, I guess we've got a bishop we can move. And we've got, yes, another bishop here. Uh, we can go up to Aragon and just get a sense of this, but I think they're, they're concentrated around here. They may not even have all of these provinces. So they may be focusing their attention there and just kind of building up to keep pace with us. But if I strip all of the good stuff out of Saxony, we go to Pomerania. We're facing a two-star general with very low loyalty, interestingly. Ooh. They're going to be a civil war, it looks like. We've got a general here of royal blood with a single loyalty shield. We've got a general of royal blood with a single loyalty shield here. Yeah, we get them. We just push them again. They might, they might collapse. How's their king doing? Yeah, three influence. So they're, they're gaining back some of their territory, but I, geez, I, I want to keep up the pressure, don't I? All right, let's go. Oh, we don't have any money. 1328, that's, that's real small. Were we in the middle of the Citadel? I think we were. I think we got interrupted. Ah, oh, that's such a shame. And we don't get that money back, of course. So, the force here at any rate is... Uh, is kind of weak, I would say. They've got these really awesome Russ Spearmen. 
and they've got a ballista, but they don't have any long range stuff other than that. Uh, you know, these guys do have bows, but there's only 13 of them. Let's push them. Um, let's not build anything in Saxony because I'm thinking that, you know, the, uh, the Danes are going to swipe us. Let's just take everything right over to Pomerania. And we are making cash, so let's go ahead and uh, do another feudal sergeant here. We want numbers, and we don't want the Danes to think that we are an easy target. So let's move the archers over. Uh, I kind of also feel like we don't need to defend this province all that much. So we can probably do that. Okay, and then in uh, the Holy Land, let's see, I don't, in terms of our, our sea fleets, I think we're pretty secure, but in the Holy Land itself, you know, again, we don't have any enemies nearby, at least yet. The Golden Horde could spin out and uh, cause some trouble for us, but we just finished completing our Catapult Towers for that eventuality. Tripoli is kind of weak, but let's, um, let's just sit. All we need to do is hold against Hungary, and we get like nine or ten more years before we can hit them safely. Okay, very interesting. Oh no. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we're keeping up the pressure on Novgorod, because they're doing too well against the Golden Horde. This is going to be a very disappointing campaign. Good. They retreat out of Lithuania. That's really good, because that's where their king is. That means they're just going to lose it outright. The Horde is just going to get it. Okay, they retreat from Pomerania. Okay, that's now a problem, but we're training another boat here. Now, who was that? Probably the Italians. Okay, yep, the Hungarian uh, king is dead, and we're stripping that governor of his titles so that we can give uh, Lorraine to this guy here, who has slightly better stats. Okay, let's bring him up to Flanders, and yeah, one more season, and we'll have shipping again. Now, the Italians can't attack me here, and we're not at war with anybody new, so they've just got a rogue ship that I can't see how good it is because we don't have a ship in the same waters. Um, that's fine. It's just contained up there. You know, where, where are they even getting these ships, right? They can't they can't build them. Uh, okay, so yeah, the Danes are doing pretty well, actually. Let's see. No border forts down here. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, could we push them into a rebellion? I mean, not while they got all these troops here. At some point, they're going to spread themselves too thin, right? And if they declare war on us... Let's go with another uh, caravel. If they declare war on us, they're going to have to contend with our fleets. So that's probably where the blow is going to fall first at sea. Okay, where is the Novgorod king? He's up in Livonia, and he's lost another point of influence. Prince Chort has his three loyalty. All right, I think we just stay put here. Who needs to be in charge of Saxony? Anybody? I think we got a good little stack here. I'm not too worried about that. Okay. Uh, our organ gun, though, is going with us up to Saxony. And I think we do need to shuffle some stuff over to Brandenburg. Yeah, okay. So the Hungarians are concentrated around Volinia. You know, if it looks like the Horde is in trouble, I will help them. <laughs> I am going to really strongly considering taking the XCOM. To, uh, to save the Golden Horde, because the last thing I want is Hungary or Novgorod to be running rampant over the steppes. You kind of want the Golden Horde to win, in my experience. I mean, yes, they are a, a terrifying threat, but they will run out of steam. They can only make, like, three or so different unit types. You know, it's a very, very basic roster. Now, it's very effective, especially initially, uh, but they've got these Mongol Heavy Cav. That's their royal unit as well. Uh, they've got the, you know, the mercenaries that are local to the area. You know, you could theoretically get these two at an inn. Uh, naphtha throwers, a lot of factions can train those. Uh, but their, their other native units are these Mongol warriors and their Mongol horse archers, which are basically mounted these guys. 
And again, they're they're good units. Uh, these guys are a, uh, like a hybrid melee ranged unit, and these are too to some extent. Uh, but you know that's it. it. There's not a lot of depth to their roster, and as they expand, they get weaker, right? Their armies sort of settle down, and they're just stuck in Armenia. That is so frustrating. Why are they doing nothing? I mean, they're at war with the Byzantines. It's completely ridiculous that they would just sit there. All right, let's just keep the princess in Armenia um, and hope we get an alliance and can work together. But, like, if if Hungary starts to push them back, then I think I may just do a bite the bullet, right? Especially if my king is getting older. You know, he's 46, and the pope is 43. You know, we're talking an XCOM that would last, what, 10 years maybe? Could I weather that? I mean, I think so. All right, let's make sure we've got our loyal governor in charge of that stack. And yeah, more chivalric uh, men-at-arms, or chivalric um, sergeants, rather. Croatia's looking really weak. Okay, let's take... Um, Jeez, I'm tempted to take a lot of these units north. I think we'll leave the three-star general. Let's take, like, our feudal knights. Chivalric sergeants. Well, we can't take them yet. Let's take, like, a couple of Swabians. Yeah, and these guys. And I think with everything else left there, I think we're still in, in quite good shape. Right, this is almost a full stack. I mean, a lot of it's garbage, but, um... Okay. Let's see, could we re-up some archers? Yeah, let's just train a new unit, just a brand new unit. Rather than retrain the 30 that are already there. And then Brandenburg, right. We can't just let that sit there. I guess we may as well go for the spear maker here. Feels like a bit of a waste. We also need to save some cash so that we can pay for the crusade because I'm sure the Pope will want us to shell out for it. Let's just keep the siege going. Uh, we could get hit by Hungary, I guess. They're allied, I think, with the people of Novgorod. Yeah, so they could try to relieve the siege. Uh, that would uh, be unfortunate. But I think we'd be able to hold out. And in Silesia, let's see, that'll be a river battle. So that's an important consideration. If they attack us from here, can we hold out with a small force on a, on a bridge? Let's move these guys up, and what does that look like? Yeah, it's kind of weak. But we can train another unit of archers, so they'll be ready next turn. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just do that. Yeah, okay, <laughs> insufficient funds. Yeah, they, Novgorod just has a lot of units to throw around. Yep, okay, so they're they're counterattacking. Okay, good. The horde is coming out. Very, very good. All right, they're failing to take back Khazar. That is awesome. And here, this is a defensive battle for us. Prince Chort and Chort Kuritsev. Now, Prince Chort here is leading 40 boyars. Very, very good unit. And this is his best, second best unit, Russ Spearman. Uh, but we've got a couple of archers. We've got uh, a unit of Royal Knights. We've got stuff to stop and delay his units. And I think these Chivalric Men-at-Arms should do really well against these unupgraded Russ Spearmen. But we shall see. If we uh, win this battle, where there's a chance we might get the castle and get Pomerania. And if we win the battle, even if we don't get the castle, that will at least delay them. Uh, it'll, it'll be another loss, right, for the uh, people of Novgorod, and I'd really love to see a civil war. I think we need to see that, if the Horde is going to have much success. Okay. So, let's see. We, right, we've got Mount of in too, and they're going to be coming. It's very weird. We've got this uh, pond in the middle. So I imagine they're going to be crushed right here they're going to be like on that side and if we set up right there that might be good so this is our general and this here is our 
Crown Prince, Prince Conrad. So we have to be careful with him. Uh, we get the Man of the Crossbowmen here. Again, they've got zero range. They do have a Ballista, right? But I don't, I'm not that bothered, honestly, by that. We'll get the Archers right in front of the Mounted Crossbowmen. And we'll get our Feudal Sergeants right in front of the Archers. The Cavalry Archers can shoot over the heads of the Bowmen. Bowmen can shoot in an arc over the Feudal Sergeants. Uh, and yeah, this leaves kind of like a little channel for our cavalry to charge through, or... Yeah, we can put these guys up here. How about that? Concealed. A nice little ambush. Alright, there's an ambush too. The Vikings will, I imagine, do fairly well there. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, they're going to come down, and I think they are going to get to shoot us with this ballista. That's got to be in range. Yeah, firing. Okay, what are they hitting? It's gonna... I think we just saw it miss. You know, if it does any damage, it's gonna hit, like, one guy. So, not that worried about it. One of the problems, though, with setting these ambushes is that the AI is very concerned about them. And so they will send units off to sort of look in the trees. At least for a while, right? Once they start to come under fire that tends to focus their attention. But if you don't want to be hit by ballistas for too long, uh, then you shouldn't do what I've done, which is put guys in the woods, because they'll just delay, and they will uh, try to find them. All right, so they're gonna probably rush in their Russ spearmen, which is the smart thing for them to do. So my chivalric men-at-arms are gonna want to engage this unit. Okay, they're actually, uh, they are delaying a little bit. Let's hit the boyars, the general there, although the back of this is a nice, tempting target. Awesome. Destroy these rust spearmen. Yep, see, they're searching. They're looking for the infantry. And those ballistas, yeah, they're taking out, what, they've taken out two of my archers. Maybe they've taken out one feudal sergeant. Not a problem. We know I would have taken out 30 of their rust spearmen. Absolutely a good trade. We've also taken out some of their boyars. Yeah, I'll just, just keep with this. I'm very happy with this. And now it's, you know, it's feudal sergeants versus spears, but now we've got the numbers, we've got the upgrades, and we've got the valor advantage here. You know, this is a good unit, but um, I think in these circumstances, yeah, look at, they're trying to, they're trying to deal with uh, the, the, uh, the pond here, the water. Can't get around it, so they're, now they're attacking. Alright, let's do one more shot, and then we'll switch targets to something else. We can't hit the boyars anymore, so how about those slobs? And we have been discovered. Let's send the Vikings, and send the Chivalric Men-at-Arms. You know what? Send the Urban Militia, too. Get my knights a little bit closer. Okay, we've got our archers in this fight somehow. Now, we are going to catch up with some of their units, and I mean, it's boyars, so this is not the right matchup. Get the feudal sergeants over there really quick. And we're going to be, I think, okay for a little while. These are quite good units. And now that we're in the back... Alright, let's just cancel the orders that we've been giving these guys. We should be seeing some routing here. Oh, we are seeing some routing, and it's uh, my Vikings. And the Chivalric Men-at-Arms are getting, uh... Kind of getting wrecked. Alright, 
I'll pull the general back. I don't want this to become uh, too much of a disaster. And let's get the mounted crossbowmen over here. That was a very, very costly battle for us. Do have some archers left. Jeez, those chivalric men at arms. I mean, boyars are a really good unit, apparently. Uh, you know, I knew that going in. Let's throw in the general and get this guy around. I do have to be careful now about the ballista because that is, uh, you know, a dangerous unit. Let's just send the feudal sergeants this way. I am really risking my prince here, but let's do it. And of course the general's involved. Um, yeah. Throw in the archers. Gonna get rid of that ballista very quickly here. Royal Knights, my general, have not taken any losses yet, and there goes the ballista. Let's pull back. I don't care about it anymore. The actual uh, machine has been destroyed. All right, let's hit the 13 boyars in the back. We've got what is this? Two units of Slav javelin men. Well, I will worry about them a bit later. Royal Knights in the back of Boyars. Let's see how this goes. This is one of their princes. We're doing fairly well. We want to defend against javelins suddenly appearing in our back. Let's chase them off with the mounted crossbows and feudal sergeants. Three Boyars. So we've done a lot of damage to them. I should get these archers out of here, shouldn't I? Let's throw the archers in. And, I mean, this is obviously terrible to be fighting in the woods with your cav. Okay. He's just retreating that way. So we'll take all of these guys. And uh, move them up towards the javelin men. Because it looks like he's just fleeing the field. that three okay they've got some routers over here not a big deal and we have caught up to their boyar don't know if we're gonna get him and we'll see if my prince has survived uh, he's not the general here so we would not be notified awesome and even now his body oh that's great 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 let's go here uh, yes it's in the woods but let's hit those javelin men there they go. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Awesome. Okay. So this is just a defensive battle uh, for Pomerania or just to allow us to keep sieging Pomerania. But that was like everything they had in the area, I think. There may be something over in Prussia. Uh, and we'll see if they'll pay any ransom. Yeah, they will. Okay. 428. Not too bad. And we're the richest with less than 2,000 florins. Okay. Danes have been excommunicated. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, so now this is the problem. Pomerania had previously been uh, like one or two years from falling. Now it is. Uh, it will not fall without a direct assault because there's uh, 11 defenders inside the keep. All right, we are allies with the Golden Horde. Wonderful. Now, this is going to be a little bit of, a, of an issue because if we take Prussia, we will now border the uh, Golden Horde. And I wonder if they will maintain the alliance with me. Hmm. Well, I think we need to keep up the pressure on the people of Novgorod. I am sick of their foolishness. I want revenge for the failed Northern Crusade. And I want to strengthen my position around here. Get some of these trade goods. Wood. Butter honey or wax uh, Pomerania has some stuff too so we'll just lower those taxes and this is uh, this is this is begging for an auto resolve we will take losses though let's see do we have a prince still here yes we do Prince Conrad is still alive 
And Prince Otto leading the battle here. Uh, only one man left in his unit. Okay, this is the uh, the army that they ransomed. And that tells us that they've got cash, right? If they're still able to pay for the ransom, but now look at this loyalty, zero. Now, the fact that the Danes are excommunicated also means that we could save this crusade for them. We are neutral with them now. We could take Denmark uh, and just say, you know what? I'm going to remove this problem preemptively. Hmm. Well, let's uh, let's wait on that. They may decide to force the issue. I'd rather not, you know, because I like having a trading partner, and it's so interesting to see them uh, over here in Spain. Let's see, where is their king? He's 33, so, I mean, this this excommunication could last for, you know, as long as the Pope lives, which could be another... 15 years so they could be excommunicated for a very long time indeed all right now we're making over 2000s very very nice you know the issue is if we don't assault and resolve this siege now then we are we're kind of we're just going to continue to take these little dribs and drabs of losses because you know the awesome mechanic of uh, of medieval total war of course is the besiegers take casualties too. So I kind of think we want to assault it. Uh, and I'll probably just auto-resolve this. And probably a bunch of these units are going to take losses that I could have avoided otherwise. But the other thing is we've got low loyalty here and I don't want a big uh, uprising. So we'll assault the castle. That's going to give everybody something to focus on. It raises the loyalty like ridiculously high just assaulting. Uh, so it's like what 50 points? But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do that. And I really want to see them collapse into a civil war here so that the Mongols can get big and, and you know do my dirty work for me of hurting the Hungarians. Yeah, the Hungarians are massing. Okay, there's a big hit on rum. Also good. Oh, jeez. There goes Leon, Portugal. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Hungary and the people of Novgorod are teaming up. So that kicks the horde out of Lithuania. All right, yeah, crusade over to uh, Livonia, Prussia, one of those places. Okay, so a castle assault here. This is a keep. I'm going to auto-calc it. We lost 34 men. And uh, yeah, there we go. We pillaged 1,400 florins. Got a bit of ransom. Got our spear maker in Brandenburg. And let's see how the income looks. 1,365. Why is that? That seems low. We were making 2,000 last season. Okay, so it's this. Flanders is screwed up by the presence of this Italian ship. All right, so we'll move down one of our uh, caravels. We're going to get another one in the North Sea next turn when Friesland finishes. And let's go with a bark here. But we've got 5,000 florins now. That's, that's quite good. That's from our pillage of Pomerania. And, you know, Poland, you know, if you check this out, I mean, they've got you know, some formidable troops, you know, some royal knights, but it, they're not in a posture to invade. So this is all very, very nice. Now, do I want to use my crusade? Because hmm. it, it looks like they're, it looks like Hungary is going to attack down here. If I get a crusade up to Prussia, I think that would be good. That gives me a bunch of troops. That gives me access to all of these places to uh, attack the Hungarians or reinforce my allies, the Golden Horde, if, say, if they attack Volhynia, which would be great. Just concentrate all their forces into this little province. Um, Let's see how they are in Volga, Bulgaria, because they moved up that way. I think they took out some Byzantine territory, and it looks like they've successfully moved into Rum. Uh, so that's also great. Byzantines have been moving troops away. They had two stacks over here in Syria before. So it looks like uh, it looks like the Horde is going to be doing damage in Anatolia. 
Oh, I forgot to set my, my crusade. Well, okay, it happens. I also need to see what Pomerania looks like in terms of uh, public order. Good, okay, the Horde is still knocking the Hungarians around. Now, this is not going to be a lasting gain, probably. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, that's great. Okay. We lost the fleet there, but that's why we moved down that caravel. We got our port in Venice, finally, and a castle completed in Flanders. That should help our income quite a bit. 3,000. Yeah. So that's that port. I mean, Flanders is still not trading as well as it can. So that single port in uh, Venice. This is making 15, 16 now. Was it making like uh, one-tenth of that before? So, yeah, it really pays. It really pays to have an actual port. Uh, okay, we've got an extra ship here if I need it. For now, I'm just using it for eyes on roads, but it's not doing us any good, arguably, because we're not trading with roads at all. But that's just a free bark we could move somewhere if we want. Uh, I don't think we need it at the moment. But yeah, okay, Pomerania is very low and just at 100 loyalty. So let's just uh, do the old Slav cheap garrison thing. We will try not to rely on them. And um, border forts. I think, honestly, probably we want to go garrison stuff instead. Let's move these guys over and train up a unit to replace them. Uh, okay, so Flanders has its castle. So this is a two-star uh, galley versus a one-star caravel. With that castle, what I could do is start uh, going down the agent route a little bit. Like, I could get to spies, which is kind of shocking that I have, you know, it's the high era and I haven't built a single uh, the brothel yet. But again, it feels like I need all of my money to be sent on, like, economy or military stuff. And I haven't barely gotten into assassins, right? Like, we've got a few kicking around, a couple stars, but basically nothing. So I could get Flanders going with subterfuge. Um, but, you know, it, it does feel like we want to be really, uh, uh, really defensive in terms of, of the waters. So let's get two places we can have caravels. Uh, Saxony... Yeah, let's do the castle in the ring wall. Although, let's see, there's nothing here that we can train uh, like fantastic right now. This is going to be our Gothic Knights eventually, uh, but that might need to be uh, need to wait for the late era. So let's just go for defense in Saxony. That's pretty low cost. Uh, Pomerania. You know, let's do an inn. That's right on our front line, and now the Hungarians are hanging out here in Poland. Now, they are possibly just going to counterattack Moldavia. This is where, if we weren't under threat of excommunication, it would be really neat for us to hit Poland now, just as a, uh, a pinning maneuver, sort of. But the game is, uh, is not... Uh, well, the game will allow us to do it, but uh, it's not going to be a great move. All right, but speaking of mercenaries, do we have anything interesting to pick up? Not here. I mean, they could hit us one of these places. Maybe they want a ceasefire now, honestly. Let's give it a shot. Uh, since I don't think we have any agents in the area, let's throw a princess at it. She's getting older anyway. Uh, we'll see if they'll take it. And I think they've got they've got princes who are unmarried, so they may want to take it just to get an heir. Uh, and if we cease fire, we cease fire. Fantastic! I won't worry about it. We'll just we'll just uh, keep the crusade. But speaking of that crusade, let's get that going. Let's go right over to Prussia. And what would be awesome is if I could go through Hungarian territory on my way. One thousand florins is what the Pope is requesting. I am willing to pay that out. 
and we've got a decent little size here. We've got Teutonic Knights. You know, I wonder if the game tracks the objective province, because Teutonic Knights are like, that's where they need to be. I never got Teutonic Knights when I was crusading in the Holy Land. I only got them when I was crusading up here. So that's that's very neat. Um, I don't know if that's the way it works, but it would be kind of neat. So let's uh, bring them over to Bavaria. Again, we're trying to move through like Poland or even Hungary. I'll take my time, make a sort of a long uh, path. But yeah, we, we will want that in because we're going to need to start throwing uh, some troops at Prussia. Let's go with an archer in Brandenburg. Let's just honestly train almost anything. Uh, mounted crossbowmen in Silesia. Uh, let's go with just regular archers in Bohemia, and I think I think that'll do it. So one thing I'm noticing is that Hungary actually owns Lithuania now. So Novgorod is being hurt by its allies to some extent because that was a battle, that was a three-way fight where Novgorod, Hungary, and the Golden Horde uh, were fighting for that province. And the two al of the two allied armies, Hungary's was larger, so they got the province. Well, this is very interesting. The Horde is doing great in Anatolia. And uh, the Egyptians are, are capitalizing on this by hitting the Byzantines. Sure, I will take that too. If they got off their butts, they could take Egypt back probably. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right, so we lost another ship there. Let's see, do we have anything here? Nope, we just got to keep cranking these boats out. This is just just obnoxious. Um, I think I'm going to risk just both of these, and we'll try to take care of this idiot. I mean, we could bring this, this ship over too, because honestly, it's not doing us any good where it is. Uh, but we could also just move down here and just try to take out the Italian ships. They're generating more, though. They must have a, a place to make them in Grenada, so never mind. Let's just go up here. Uh, we're training fleets everywhere we can uh, that's relevant. All right, and how's our crusade looking now? We've got 662 men. Picked up some uh, some random stuff, as usual. And we can go into Bohemia, which means we are going to go through Poland and wreck some of their units. Zeal there is 61. That's not very high. Oh, there's our civil war, though. <laughs> okay. I'm a little sad to see it at this moment, only because um, they're not going to check Hungarian expansion. Right? They're, they don't exist anymore to hold back the Hungarians. So what we're going to do is uh, wait until our excommunication warning expires in another, you know, five or so years. Uh, and then if the Hungarians are looking bad, we'll worry about them then. What's this? Is this Hungary? No, this is Byzantines. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. The Byzantines are, are suffering. They're going to lose Sicily. They've got a little tiny rebellion in Naples. Uh, they're going to outright lose Bulgaria, which is, again, only going to help the Hungarians. They may lose Anatolia, and they may lose Georgia, but they've already lost Syria. That is amazing. What a quick reversal of fortune, right? 1230, the Byzantines were at the top of the heap, pretty much. They owned all of this territory. It's like, yeah, they were showing down with the Egyptians, but they, they waited a little bit too long to take care of them. And then the horde emerges, and then all of this is gone. So, wow. Yep, he's sitting on uh, four influence, Emperor John II, eager to retreat. Yeah, and the horde is now right outside Constantinople. So, all right, now we, you know, we're allied with them. We just hope they don't uh, try to attack us, because that would be counterproductive for them, I would think. And we want to see a civil war happen amongst the Hungarians, too, or, you know, a faction emergence. I would love to see the Polish reemerge. 
and maybe they will. We'll, uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Okay, so we're moving our crusade into Bohemia. Uh, let's see, do we want to move another unit up? I think we just got to keep training stuff out of these provinces. Um, we could go ahead and, and grab some mercenaries. We wouldn't be able to send them into the army yet. And honestly, at this point, it might not be necessary. Because uh, this is a tiny force, right? By the time we get there. Here's what I'm not sure of. Like, I could take this myself now without the crusade, I think. There's nobody in the fort. There's these units outside. There's 36 of these boyars. Uh, but everything else is really low tier, unupgraded. If we take this, does our crusade fail? Do we get the marker back? Do we get credit for the crusade? We've got six influence faction leader here. Because if we don't take this now, but the Hungarians do, then I think we may lose the crusade because it's in Catholic hands. There's no need for it. But I think I still want to risk it. I want the crusade to go through Poland. I think that's that's just the thing. Any way I can weaken the Hungarians at this point. Um, well, I mean, I say that as I'm, uh, as I'm asking for a marriage alliance with them, but... All right, we've got some money that we could spend here. Let's see. The, the Danes are not uh, not concerned about us. They've got they've got fewer forces at Denmark. All right. Let's let's hold on to the cash because uh, in two seasons we'll be able to build the citadel, and I'm feeling secure now uh, in in building that. Yep, they did not attack us. They did not attack uh, Prussia. The Hungarians didn't. They've got other fish to fry dealing with the Horde. And yeah, the Horde is having some trouble in the steppe. Okay, flood in Friesland. Prince of Novgorod has died. And the Poles reemerge. Okay, so this is going to screw stuff up. <laughs> oh, I love it, though. I love it. The Poles reemerge. Now, where are they? Not in Hungary, because they never had that, but I mean, not in Poland. They might be in Volhynia, but uh, I don't know how far east they ever got. That's three stacks. All right, let's see what happens here. The French, what? <laughs> oh, I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. This is a surprise. Uh, yes, indeed. The French reappear in Bulgaria, of course. Now, why is this? Here's my theory. Uh, the French, any faction, can reemerge in any province that they once owned. The French, to my knowledge, never actually completely owned Bulgaria, but they crusaded through here, right? We, I think we helped them get to Edessa at one point or something. Uh, so that means they passed through Bulgaria. As part of doing that, they may have fought uh, the Byzantines and forced them into Bulgaria or rebels or somebody right or maybe their crusade was there and maybe that's all that all that it takes so I'll take it we've got a, a French force in Bulgaria a Polish force in Prussia the Polish reappear in Prussia yeah just this one province I guess okay but okay Prussia is still technically rebel held Oh, this is so interesting. Now, when they come back, you can see the stuff they've got is kind of low tier. They've got a, a very, very poor uh, governor. And in fact, this faction may die off pretty soon. He's 45, and he doesn't have any heirs. So this could be a big problem um, for him, right? Now, if he does die off, he'll leave three full stacks at least. So that's something. It looks like the Hungarian king is avoiding my princess. He's just maneuvering around the map. Uh, wonder do I want to use her to try to wed the Polish king and hope that he has some kids and lives until 60 to see them mature. Right, or, or older than 60 because he's 45. 
sons mature at 16 I think so he would need to be 61 and my princess is gonna take a couple of turns to get there too that's just a bishop one two sees two turns I don't have any other princesses nearby um let's keep with this Although, actually, you know, I'm really not so sure about this anymore. Let's cancel this. Because what, what that'll do is that'll, I think, that'll ally us uh, with, with the uh, Hungarians. So let's instead use, like, a bishop to try to get a ceasefire. All I want is a ceasefire, really. We'll worry about the alliance later. Now, the French... Uh, are similarly, oh my gosh, they're going to be gone. They're going to be gone very soon, so it's probably not worth it to get my princess uh, thrown to some of these old guys who are just not, not going to live to see any sons mature. Well, uh, we've got 1,390 men. Uh, I'm going to go into Poland for sure. Now, the Hungarians have a decision to make here. They can refuse to allow me through because we are at war, and then they will be excommunicated. Now, if that does happen, I'll have to fight a battle here. And, you know, I think we'd do okay. We've got a lot of archers. We've got Pavi's uh, crossbowmen. We've got some decent spears, and we've got a trebuchet. We picked up some random mercenaries. Uh, but, yeah, I think that'll be fine. If we end up fighting this, I think we should we should handle it pretty well. So let's see what this does. Go with yet another bark uh, outside of Flanders. And where's that Italian ship? They must have moved. Moved away. Okay, so we'll we'll bring the caravels down that way and uh, bring these caravels back here, I guess. And yeah, we're making cash. We're just going to hold on to that for a while. Uh, the Egyptians would be an interesting ally as well. Because, again, the, Byzant the Byzantines at this point are a non-factor for me. Um, if I ally with the Egyptians... Well, I'm not sure if I can. I guess we could give it a shot. Got a bishop right here. Uh, sorry, if I ally with the Egyptians. They are allied with uh, you know several f all of these factions I'm at war with. I guess you never know, right? They could decide to cancel their other alliances. Right, at least the horde is still moving around. So they're not totally out of steam yet, but it might be soon. All right, we are welcome to march through the Hungarians' land. Great. All right, the Byzantines attacked Bulgaria, but retreated, and the crusade is now disbanded. <laughs> okay. All right. Do we get the marker back, I wonder? All right, no alliance with the Egyptians. That's fine. We've got a magnificent builder for our emperor and uh we do not get the marker so we just spent spent a thousand uh for the crusade and gave the pope another thousand uh for really no reason oh that's unfortunate okay he's married though so there's a chance that that the polish could continue as a faction uh i don't think they have any allies but i would love to ally with them at this point let's do it let's see if we can get an ally uh, I don't know if they will because, um, well, we're so big, right? We're a big, scary faction that nobody likes. Right, and you are going to get a ceasefire with the Hungarian king in Bohemia. Uh, you know, I'm not bordered with the French, but I'm tempted to ally with them just because it seems like it would be cool. Let's send a princess, um to scout out, oh, I don't know, Smolensk, I guess. And we'll see what the French do, if they stick around, if it looks like, are they going to get married? Yep, he's married now, but, I mean, he's going to have to be very long-lived in order to have any chance of seeing outcome from that marriage. Okay, we've got 9,000 in the bank now. This would be a good time to get going on the Citadel. That's 4,000. We need to start spending that. And... 
Do I want to spend another crusade? I kind of do. I kind of just for spite, I want Livonia. Um, I can end our war with the people of Novgorod by moving a boat. So there we're not at war anymore. Let's go ahead and, and build up another crusade. And if we're not at war with the people of Novgorod and we get a ceasefire with the Hungarians, we could maybe get an alliance back with the Danes and the English. Good. That's that Italian ship. And the Poles do not want an alliance with us. That's upsetting. Oh, did the, did the Crusade just dump all of our troops here? Wow. That is really neat. I, I was wondering. I uh, just saw all these stacks sitting here. Fantastic. Well, okay. Uh, you know what? You can be the, uh, what is this? The Duke of Pomerania. Make him a uh, five-star general. You know, ideally you want to get them to an even number because that, that just helps things out. Uh, every two command stars, your generals get a, get a little, uh, your, all of your units get a valor bonus. Yeah, okay, and our income, even with all of these units that we got for, for the crusade, um, our income is doing okay. Well, it's a real shame the Poles won't ally with us because we could be a big help to them, I think. And that would really stink if they started hitting us in Pomerania. But that's why we're getting another crusade. We'll move that through Polish territory. And I do want to hit Livonia. Um, we're not yet at peace with Novgorod, but another turn or two, and we ought to be. All right, so I see that the the, uh, the Horde still owns territory in the Eastern Steppe, but I'm, I'm thinking they've just about run out of steam there. They've got a good position in Anatolia, maybe. Byzantines holding on in Constantinople. Very fitting, but they've lost most of their islands. They're going to lose Georgia, and then the Horde will be able to communicate with itself, and hopefully that'll give them another sort of supercharge of strength. But look at this. Someone's been busy in Crimea. It's probably the Byzantines who built this citadel. So hopefully the Horde will manage to keep that. And hopefully we'll get a ceasefire with the Hungarians, I guess. You know, Again, I really don't want to conquer their territory. I just want to... Uh, I don't want them to get big. Uh, okay, so we've got a Loyalist revolt in Anatolia. That's going to be good for the Byzantines. And I'm really surprised they've managed to hold on in the, in the sort of the central Mediterranean. But that said, there's a little uh, revolt here. Or a civil war. Maybe round two. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a civil war. Yep. Wow. So they are reduced. The only place they are not uh, contesting, Naples, Sicily, which is completely empty, by the way, uh, Crete and Constantinople. Every other place the Byzantines own uh, is, uh, is, is being contested in terms of the civil war. revolt and we're the richest but that's one of my caravels I will just about guarantee all right no reject no uh, no ceasefire with the Hungarians okay no peace we've I think we've just gotten to that point where we're so big um, you know what do we have for provinces two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, no, 24. Because uh, these are all sea regions. So 24 provinces. Yeah, I don't know what the number is, but um, you know there is a point at which the other factions don't like you because you're too big. Okay. I mean, they're training stuff. I don't know if they're building anything. They may be. I think they built this church because this was held by the people of Novgorod. They would have uh, destroyed that. 
So they've got enough money to do some stuff, and they've got an heir. Okay. He's 44. I don't know how, how he's spawned out of thin air, but that's that's fine. Um, you know what? Let's throw our princess at him. She's 32. And see if he'll take it, because this guy is also uh, dangerously old for being unmarried and their only faction heir so far. Man, this is so interesting. I've never seen the French emerge in Bulgaria, but very happy to see it. Do they have any allies? They do. They're allied with the Pope. Very good. Well, I think this makes a good point for us to stop. I mean, we're going to have our crusade in another turn. And then, you know, then I need to give some thought as to what we're going to do with it. Uh, because I could send it against Livonia, right? We have, uh, uh, we are at peace with the people of Novgorod, but I think that's still held by rebels at this point. We could get up there and, you know, start to at least not make it so easy for Hungary to, to roll over everything. And that might be what I do, because I think they're also doing pretty well in terms of glorious achievement points. Yeah, they're at 85. I mean, that's quite good. The Byzantines are going to lose a lot of their points. They're just going to keep falling farther and farther behind. So while they are beating me now, next time we check, you know, I'm going to come out ahead. But Hungary, you know, they've got one province conquered. They get one extra point. And they can still do a lot of conquering over here, especially if the horde collapses. So we need to keep on top of them uh, and just try to secure our, our east. So that'll, I think, be our, our long-term project. And so uh, I'm looking forward to that. I hope you stick around for the next episode. Until then, everybody, take care.